Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are so excited to have the team from ADAC here joining us. And you may say, well, what's ADAC? It's empowering educators and, of course, all those from K through 12 uh, learning and helping those all students, all the needs of all students, which do matter. So we're here back uh, with Tom Olson, Mary Murata today to talk more about artificial intelligence. But before we get into that, let's get a little overview from yourself, Tom, to start about what ADAC is and, of course, what you do. Yes. Um, thank you, Jill, for having us back. And ADAC has very much appreciated the opportunity to be part of this uh, 11 podcast episode series. Today. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's wonderful for us to be able to come on your show and talk about all that ADAC does and all the various challenges and opportunities that our clients are meeting in the great field that is K-12 education. But as you've already intimated for the listeners, Jill, just to give a quick summation, uh, ADAC works with both public and private schools to empower K-12 educators to meet the learning needs of all students. And we really emphasize the word all there. We, we work with teachers and we work with school leaders in a variety of fashions. But one of our sweet spots, among others, is helping uh, both public and private schools to develop the infrastructures and the capacities and the means that they need to be able to teach students with learning difference as well. Uh, so that is really one of the thrusts of our mission, but by no means the only part of our mission as conveyed throughout this series. And so it's a pleasure and a privilege, Jill, uh, Jill for me to be back on with you and to uh, have with you this time one of our team members, Mary Murata, who I will obviously have you introduce next. Great, Mary, tell us a little about what you do with ADAC, please. Great. So um, I'm working with ADAC as a consultant and focusing on technology integration and the most recent topic, artificial intelligence in education and how that connects with the classroom, teaching and learning. Amazing. Well, thanks for being here. And Tom, if you don't mind sharing your title, I know I got to meet you uh, as well as your partner last time. Just tell us a little about your background. Yes, happy to. Uh, so I'm one of the founders of ADAC. Uh, I'm the chief executive officer, the CEO of ADAC, along with one of the co-founders. I founded ADAC back uh, back in 2018 with my business partner, Steve Perla, who's the president, mm -hmm. who I know you've interviewed and who will continue to be interviewed in part of some of these programs. Um, my background in the field of education came more from the philanthropy management side of things, helping private schools, private yep. schools, that is, to secure for themselves the private resources, philanthropic and otherwise, that uh, they need to function well. And through that work, I got to know education, got to know the K-12 space, and um, became eventually, after founding ADAC, ADAC CEO. So very happy to be with you once again today, Jill. Great. Thanks so much. And Mary, thank you so much for being here. Let's talk a little about AI and just, you know, for newcomers, what exactly it is. And we'll get to know what inspired you as an early adopter of artificial intelligence, please, especially in the K through 12 uh, fields. Thank you. Sure. So uh, my background has been an instructional technology coach in K-12 for approximately 25 years. So that means I have the privilege to work with teachers in the classroom. Um, and it's been through a variety of different technology tools. So if we back things up a few years ago, maybe it was iPad, maybe it was Chromebooks, but it's always been some form or level of technology integration in the classroom. Uh, and how that might improve teaching practices. But while being in the K-12 classroom, I've always had like a side job. I've always done consulting outside of the school or at higher ed. Uh, my previous work before I came into public education is I worked um, in the corporate environment. So I feel like I have this mix of uh, technology skills yeah. um, tied with, I have a, a degree in um, instructional technology as well. About when here we are talking about AI, and I know you just mentioned the Chromebook and the iPads. My kids are seven and nine, and my cousin, the the niece and nephews are maybe 16, 14. I'm still fascinated with the smart board. I, I still remember the chalkboard with chalk. And when I went there for like um the, the, the school night a few months ago, the open school night, I said, how does this work? <laughs> Was that something as well you were helping people adapt to in the classroom? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Believe it or not, I, I became a Microsoft, um, I'm sorry, a smart board certified trainer. Oh, wow. So I went through <laughs> training for the smart board and how to use it. Because again, people invest all that money into technology. And unless you know the pedagogy behind it, the software to use, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a 
big projection board. So it may not be your smart board now. We've, we've moved into a lot of interactive panels, um, but wow. a lot of that, teachers have this equipment dropped in the classroom and, you know, good luck. And without professional development, they just become really heavy paperweights. So uh, I, I think it's really important that professional development is tied to what teachers are doing in the classroom. Amazing. So let's get to AI. It's all over the news, artificial intelligence the past few months. When were you first introduced to it? And could you tell our listeners a little bit about it? And then we'll get to how AI is now being adapted into the classroom and what that entails. So I think it was in a, um, a staff meeting, maybe in about December 2022, January 23, someone mentioned the word chat GPT. And I can remember thinking, you know, I've got a good pulse on technology. I have no idea what that is. And I came into my office and I wrote it on the board and I texted a few people that I work with and they're like, I have no idea what it is. Literally six weeks later, it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, my style of learning something is maybe jumping in, taking a look at what it is. But I had been working with a few tools. So for instance, Canva for education, it had built some of that artificial intelligence into the program anyway. Okay. So I could look at what that tool was, then look at ChatGPT. And now it's just, it's exploded. It's everywhere. And um, I think that was the February timeframe. Um, I was approached to put together um, a workshop about introducing teachers to ChatGPT and AI. And in the spring of 2023, we put together like a 15 credit class. What is it? And we had a lot of teachers sign up. So you kind of have your early adopters, like, what is it? I want to know about it. Um, so we've delivered that a few times. Amazing. And could you share the difference or distinction, I should say, between AI and generative AI? I've heard both terms and I'm not really familiar myself. Absolutely. So I think um, we've always had, I shouldn't say always, um, we've had artificial intelligence. I try to think of it as like things in my household, for instance, um, whether it's like uh, Alexa or Surrey or uh, Google Home or Nest Thermometers. And basically it takes those human-like intelligent tasks and it's automating them. So we've had artificial intelligence and tools and applications for a number of years, but I think the new subset of that on the new buzzword now is generative AI. And that's more like the chat GPT and all the tools that we're seeing come out that it's more about creation tools and it's more about what you put into the program and it's creating information based on um, language models. Wow. So, so one is one you create with and other okay. one is kind of like how you use it. Okay. Well, what are some of the promises of AI in K through 12 education? So I guess it depends who you ask. I think if we had a panel here of 12 people, you might get 12 different answers. I'm going to give you kind of like um, what I have seen in the classroom with it. Um, I think AI does have the potential to personalize learning for students. Um, it can also like enhance teacher efficiency and what teachers are doing, not only with just administrative tasks, but the ability to create rubrics, lesson plans, automate some of that work that could take teachers hours to do, mm -hmm. um, you could do it in a shorter period of time. Is it 100% correct and perfect? Absolutely not. So I would say that when I've used many of these tools, I've gotten about a 75, 25% um, range. So I'm about 75% happy with what it has. The more I use it and the better prompts I know what to give it, I feel like that's gone up to a little bit more of an 80% range. Um, but it, it has lots of opportunities to um, take lesson plans that may exist and differentiate that instruction. It could be on reading levels, translation of tools. It's worked well where I've had to um, adapt instruction in a classroom based on um, the students that are in the class. So I might have students that are on an IEP or a 504 or EL students that I now have the ability in some of these programs to quickly adapt to meet those needs. Great, thank you. And Tom, just curious from your background, when did you learn about AI? And then obviously now including it and making it all inclusive with your company. Oh, I think we're on, you're on mute. Thank you, you Jill. AI, I'm, I'm well-trained, right? Uh, so AI for all of us has been one of those realities that, 
you know, has, has come on the scene quite quickly. And one thing that I'm, you know, aware of is um, how much the, the for, for everything that we know about AI, there is so much that we don't know. And the reason for that is because of AI is constantly evolving. Yes, and what quickly. Is, exactly. What's new today is going to be old news tomorrow, right? And so I mentioned that because to answer your question directly, how did I become first aware of it? Well, unless you've been living under a rock, right? You you, you kind of have to have become aware of it, right? Yeah. In these in this last even six months or so, yeah. <laughs> the media has done a much great better job, I think, at kind of talking about it. I mean, I know you know one one major network, CNN. Uh, you know they they did some really interesting things uh, a few months ago where they were mimicking CNN broadcasters <laughs> in terms of the voices and and amazing, and, and, right? You know, yes. and it, it's both scary, but also it's it's here. And um, the fact that it's here means that we have to address it. But to answer your question, Jill, I only became aware of it uh, and it's it's ubiquity and it's importance as well. And this the importance part is really what Mary can speak to. But I only became aware of it myself over the last six or so months. Oh, OK. Well, thank you for that. And let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, perils of uh, AI and all that as well, Mary. So I think when you're in a, um, a K-12 school and working within a, within a district and you're introducing um, any kind of technology, that it can be overwhelming for a number of reasons. So I think the number one topic um, that people in education are talking about right now is um, privacy and data security. Like when you sign up for these tools and applications... Mm -hmm. What data is that collecting? How is that data being shared? So although there's a lot of tools and whether it's tools that are used in schools or tools that kids use outside of school, it's Got really it. important to know that, you know, what is that company? Where, what is the data, you know, being collected on? Um, so that's, that's one of the perils. Um, the easier that we can um, make accessing that information uh, and and almost like vet that information, the better. And what I've seen in uh, many school districts is really not just teachers figuring this out, but a committee. So school committees, um, CEOs, uh, you know, principals, superintendents coming together in a panel and a discussion to talk about the promises and perils, and also um, learn alongside of the teachers. So. Again, we have some teachers that are early adopters. They're very curious. We have other teachers that I want to stay with pen and paper. So th they're yeah. reluctant to make those changes. So it's it's really tricky. And like Tom said earlier, um, it's evolving. Um, yeah. I recently taught a class and I had 20 people in the class. And I said to the group of teachers, how many of you have used AI? And only three hands went up. So it's still really new. I think a lot of people are mm -hmm. sitting on the sidelines and kind of observing. And ADAC um, put together a great webinar we did um, last, I think it was October, Tom, that we did it. We rolled it out in um, three different sessions. And we talked about AI, generative AI, chat GPT, and how it may impact education. And I think we had over 400 wow. um, participants in each session. So teachers are curious. Um, I think one of the other things that are the perils around this, I think we have some educators that might be looking at this and saying, is it taking away the critical thinking uh, and uh, the creativity for students? Yeah. Um, and then you'll have teachers that have used it that are on the other side of the conversation that they see it enhancing it. Got it. Yeah, it's got to be hard to bring in new changes, especially to the older teachers out there. Like myself, if I was an older teacher, right? The, the youngins coming in at 20 something and this may be you know, easy for them to do. But uh, yeah, especially, you know, it's kind of hard to teach an old dog new trick that, tricks, they say, but it's part of the curriculum and it's not easy. You know, there's my father who doesn't even know how to use a cell phone. And when I told him recently about what AI was, because there was a newspaper article and he was just so confused, like, I don't understand. And then I went on the chat GPT and I said, dad, look, I can actually search my name and make some can show a picture of me as an astronaut he's like what and it was just fascinating and then I'm showing him how he could use this and he's like this is so cool but you know he was really interested and I'm sure a lot of people are but it, it's it's a learning curve it's a learning process and anytime you learn something new as I'm sure you all know especially in the educational world it could be scary so Absolutely. all right thanks for sharing that would you say there's some barriers uh in k-12 through schools though with ai yeah. as well yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I think that um, 
K-12 education, and, and again, we have to be very, very careful about student data privacy, um, how these tools are being used, um, and it varies at different grade levels. And I think um, there's a new release of the National Educational Technology Plan. So at the national level, it's starting to talk about what those barriers are. It's giving um, administration uh, toolkits to roll this out, a uh, mm -hmm. way to interact with the community. Because as we talk about barriers in education, Tom and I talked about this last week. I almost think we need to take a step back and a little bit what you said, Jill. It's not just what you're learning in school. It's what you're using outside in those conversations, like you just mentioned with your dad when you were yeah. showing. <laughs> I've had those. Those are the aha moments for me. I know that I've had some uh, family members, friends, colleagues. They've talked about, oh, I have to prepare a speech this week on, on XYZ. And they're talking and they're talking. And I'm putting into chat GPT a couple of writing prompts. And just to turn your phone around and say, what do you think of this? Um, I think I've referred to it as like, it's jaw dropping. What? Um, it's been very accurate, very concise on a lot of the key information. But again, it doesn't have that human intelligence. It doesn't know how to tell that story in that recognition speech that you would have. So that's where I talk about it might be 75, 80% on task but it doesn't have that, that human-like touch built yep. into it. And that's where um, working with teachers to integrate that into it um, makes it feel a little bit uh, more normal, if you will. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And um, also, I know uh, part of the same um, question, I guess it's kind of like piggybacked here, um, is in regards to um, the lesson plan, right? Um, or is, I'm sorry, no, no, it's how K uh, K-12 school, sorry, and educators um, can get around these barriers. And then that's the next question I was going to ask. <laughs> no, no worries. So I think, I think educators... Um, the best thing that we can do is work together as a team. So I may have one uh, one lens and how I think AI can work in the classroom. And maybe I have another teacher and, and, and it doesn't really matter in terms of, I have new teachers that are, that are new to education and maybe they've used a lot of technology, but as consumers. So they've never actually made lesson plans where they've integrated technology. And I have found even some of the teachers that I've worked with for a number of years Believe it or not, they're the teachers that are really curious. Oh, something new is coming. Um, how can I adapt this into my lesson? And the best way we can do it, and I've seen it done with lots of schools, is to put um, mm -hmm. a committee together where you're all talking about the pros and the cons. Um, maybe you're working with other schools. You're yep. working with those national educational technology plans. And just when you think you have it figured out, Jill, like <laughs> Tom says, it changes. It's changing the way I taught the class last spring. It's Amazing. going to be different subjects and um, different topics the way we're, we're going to be teaching it coming up in May. Wow. At this time, I would like to find out the best form of contact. Tom, could you share the website information and then also just tell us a little bit about the foundation as well, because I know that's a whole nother part of it before we continue. Oh, on you. Sorry. No, I get it. You're doing the respectful thing for yes, Mary. <laughs> I, I, the second time I've done that, Chill. Uh, okay. Yes, our folks can reach out to us. Uh, our best means of reaching out to us is via our website. Uh, our website is www.theadac.com. So that's T-H-E-A-D-A-C.com. And that website will lead folks to our website that's been designed for our work among private schools. But linked off of that website is also our public school website, uh, and you can there there that link website is linked to the private one. The URL for the public school website is www.theadacpublic. T h e a d a c public p u b l i c dot com, and that, so those are the there are two websites that, as I said, are linked together and convey all the work that we're doing, uh, helping teachers um, to set up systems and 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 receive uh, the professional development and the other support that they need to teach as as best they possibly can and leaders to lead as best they possibly can but you mentioned jill uh, and rightfully so that we also have a foundation uh and that foundation is called adac advocacy foundation mm -hmm. and the purpose of the adac advocacy foundation which functions as a 501c3 a nonprofit, is that we also work with private schools to help private school leaders uh, private school network leaders 
Um, so for example, Catholic diocese and archdiocese, uh, various CAPE organizations throughout the country to really ensure that private schools and private school students are fully receiving their full share and their equitable participation in federal uh, education programs, two of which that we focus on primarily, the uh, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, as well as the Every Student Succeeds Act, which is the latest authorization of the 1965 ESEA, under which the title programs fall. And Beautiful. so that's the work on the advocacy side. All right. Thanks so much for that. And uh, back to AI, besides using that really just for educational tools, I mean, it could be used by students, right? That's helping them create and uh, facilitate other formative outside of school learning experiences that really can help them personally and also in the classroom. Could you talk about some of, maybe, um, some of these experiences that students can experience with AI outside the classroom and how that can maybe infiltrate and benefit student learning overall? So what's really interesting is um, when we were um, doing lessons with kids last spring and we were introducing um, just different lesson plans that integrated some different pieces of technology, I had kids say, oh, I have a chatbot. Um, I have it on my phone. Would you like to see it, Mrs. Morata? It's, wow. it's in Snapchat. So like I didn't know that I in Snapchat that <laughs> th th there's a chatbot. And it's so what's happening is it's appearing in the social media tools as well. So this is something that I think families um, and communities need to come together. It's not just a eight to three in school subject matter. It's in different tools and applications kids are using outside of school. One of the things that we've tried to do um, at a high school that I worked at that I think it's really important is we've talked about like portrait of a graduate. What are those skills that students need going on to um, college or the workplace? And we've actually done field trips into you know, different businesses. And we've had students um, interview people that were working in CAD, design, whatever field it was. And now we're looking at how AI is starting to work with engineering programs, how it's working. Um, wow. We have kids that do like the morning news. They do a journalism segment. Like how do you, how do you write that script? Um, how, you know, how do you check it on your facts? Is all that information correct? So the more we can do to connect with what's going on inside the school with real world, um, and the bigger picture of AI in learning and, and really fostering that, you know, creativity, curiosity for students, um, I, I think the better off we'll be. While at the same time, being very cautious about barriers and giving information out. Um, and we're learning as we go. I, I even think this week, Jill, we're talking about TikTok in the news right now, right? Well, well, um, are yep. we going to be in that in the United States? And that's well, another thing I think, Tom, when we when we had this discussion last time, we always try to bring in um, in our webinars or in classes, what are the current trends? What's happening right now, this week, this month, that we can talk about that makes it interesting, not something that you wrote six months or a year ago. We try to make it real world and relevant. Well, and I got to talk to my niece and nephew about the Snapchat. I had no idea that AI yes. could be a part of it too. Uh, and then the Beatles, right? Didn't they release a song recently produced by AI? Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, I, when we were teaching uh, the webinar, we, we had um, a number of participants in it. It was on the news that week and it talked about uh, with permission, this was kind of driven. Um, Paul McCartney was involved that they were able to start of a song, generate the voices and actually release a song without um, John Lennon. I thought that was really interesting. So we talk about like the good, the bad, the ugly. I thought that was really good that they could do that. Yeah. But there's also a question on the side of, you know, a week later, artists are having their voices recorded, recorded. and used without their permission. And their faces and their bodies. Absolutely. And there's a whole nother level of, wow, what, what's going to happen? All the laws and all the it's just this trickle down effect. It's amazing. But looking at the positive, which obviously is what you all bringing into the classroom, it's just fascinating. Could you talk about some of the students, maybe some of the opportunities that it can bring and uh, even with work realities of tomorrow? So I, I think the more kids can relate and sometimes, you know, the homework is, you know, go home and speak to a family member or speak to a neighbor or someone that you know how AI is using is being used where they work or in college. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of that looking ahead, um, I can give some person ex 
personal examples um, in talking with people in HR. Oh, I have to write the following. And it's just like organically lent itself to showing them how to use a chatbot. They weren't even aware what that what that that it yeah. existed or how you can get some writing prompts. Um, some people might say, oh, is, is that cheating that you're getting that information someplace else? But I look at it in terms of it's a way to brainstorm. It's a way to get an outline, to get some ideas. It might capture some of, you know, um, your ideas and a, a, maybe a bigger lens of what's going on in the news and media as well. Got it. Well, thank you for that. And uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about um what would you say is, or why is it so thoughtful, you know, that professional development um, and them utilizing AI is essential for educators and maybe talk a little more about the support that uh, K through 12 school leaders and teachers um, are getting and benefiting by. And then I apologize, we're out of time. You only have two minutes left. So I apologize to kind of concise, no make worries. this question a little concise. Thank you, this answer. I think that's, I think that's one of the most important topics is really um, good professional development tied to what teachers are doing in the classroom. And I think ADAC was able to do that last spring by having the webinar and teachers came back and said, we want more of this guided instruction and learning. And with that, we're coming up with a uh, course um, in the month of May for educators. And I'll turn that back to Tom. He can talk a little sure. bit about that as well. Great. Yes, the course will be um, designed precisely as Mary has just said for educators um, to learn more about how to integrate AI into their, into their teaching. Uh, the course will carry with it um, PDP point opportunities as well for educators so they can utilize the taking of the course to help in their own professional development requirements. And um, I would just simply say to people to stay tuned uh, to and with ADAC about that. Um, our publicity for that course uh, is beginning as we speak, but it hasn't quite begun yet. And again, I'll just reiterate um, our website, www.theadac.com. Folks can check out uh, information on that website about the course. But the cor but just to sort of stand by, we are in the process of um, soon to begin uh, publicizing that course um, throughout the country. And we look forward to having as many folks uh, join it as possible. I know that Mary and Craig have... Uh, uh, have designed a wonderful course that will hopefully be not only a, a course that will give to folks sort of the broad picture, but also provide some real concrete um, tips that can be uh, hopefully employed and utilized. Mary, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the very concrete things that will be offered by you and Craig in that course? Yeah. Absolutely. So when we have our class, um, you know, again, we start out with the, an introduction, but there's a whole suite of educational um, generative tools that have that have come out. And just even this week, forward facing mm -hmm. student chatbots. So we want to talk to we want to take all of that information and kind of synthesize that and give people not the 200 tools that are out there, but maybe four or five that you can start with. And again, back to that committee at your school, we hope to make you um, a more informed consumer about AI, what those tools are, how it can not only help teachers, but it can also help students. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And we appreciate all that we've talked about today and would love to find out one more time how we can contact you. And uh, thanks. This has been very interesting to those, I think, in the education world and those like myself who are not. But it's just fascinating that this is taking over the world. And there's amazing impacts and, uh, of course, uh, good. There's also bad with it. So uh, it's great that um, we're learning and all doing this together. So, Tom, remind us how we can contact you, please www.theadac.com. That's T-H-E-A-D-A-C.com. Perfect. And Mary, thanks so much. You're at the same website as well, right? We can find you? Yes, absolutely. Great. Thank you. Pleasure meeting and here. talking with you. You too. Thank you so much. And to all of our listeners and viewers, stay tuned. More of the show's coming right up. One in five children in the United States have learning differences, making it more challenging than ever to be a teacher or school leader. At ADAC, we empower K-12 educators to meet the learning needs of all students through customized professional development and coaching services. Learn more at www.theadac.com. That's T-H-E-A-D-A-C dot com.
Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knock down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicapped accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.